all right, do you fat the golf ball? Do you thin the golf ball? Do you top the golf ball? Those are all symptoms of releasing early. Today, I'm gonna to help you stop the dreaded release early. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. So a lot of people, I'll tell you a quick story about releasing early. I went to a, a golf instructors conference, this has been about 25 years ago. And we're sitting around, and these are the best golf instructors in the world. We're all sitting around. Yeah, we talk about you. We're talking about how do we help people get better? How do we help people learn faster? How do we help people play this great game, make it easier? And one of the things that always comes up in golf teachers' conversations is this release early, because you see it a lot. Let me tell you what it is first. Releasing the club early is when you see somebody from that perspective, and for some reason, at the bottom of their swing, you see the hands get behind the club head in some form or fashion. So you see the club head get ahead of the hands. It's called releasing early. Casting is another name for it. Over the top can be another name for it. But there's a lot of various different ways that this release early shows up in a golf swing. Now, here's the interesting thing about it is that when this occurs in your swing, you can you, you can actually hit the golf hit behind the golf ball. You can you can actually top the golf ball. You can, you, know, you can hit it right, you can hit it left, because let me show you how a golf club works really quickly. This is a six iron, and the ball is sitting on the ground, and you'll notice that if the club is straight up and down, that it's very hard to hit the golf ball even on the sweet spot, so you have to have a bit of forward lean in the shaft. So in other words, I need to compress the golf ball. Well, the only way that can happen is if the handle of the golf club is in front of the golf ball. See that? So the handle has to be in front of the golf ball coming down. So in order to get the handle leading or the opposite of the release early, we need to get our body in position because here's what I see the problem is for most people. If you're one of those guys that releases early, you've seen this kind of stuff go on in your swing, come go try this today. I want you to try something new that's really going to help you. Number one is I got three steps to your fix here. But let's just talk about the thing that you need to, we're trying to produce in your swing. We need to get the body more rotated. I need to get the upper body more rotated as you go into impact, because here's what's happening. The, it's not actually a release early, and this is where a lot of times it get mis, gets misinterpreted. You're not coming down here and doing this. That's not what's happening. What's happening is your body is stopping too soon. So when you take the club back, you're coming down, this stops too soon, and the only thing left to go is that. So it's not a release early problem, it's a lack of upper body movement problem. Does that make sense? And this is where most instructors get it wrong. So if I'm gonna help you fix this proper compression of a golf ball and hit it correctly, I gotta fix the upper body. Now, the way you're gonna do this, it's pretty simple, it's a fun little drill you can work on. This is a ball striking drill, so you need to go hit some golf balls trying this. All I want you to do is we're gonna shorten your backswing as short as you've ever made it, about right here, and we're gonna make sure that you open the body up coming through. So it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna look like about here, and then you're gonna hit a golf ball, and you're gonna make sure that the body opens up and you get all the way to here. So it's a short backswing to there, and then open your body up. The goal is, is to get enough rotation in your body so that the hands lead. Now let me do it again. And once again, here's what I normally see. What people do is they tend to overswing. So they go too far back here. They take it too far back with their arms. They come down, their body just stops moving, and then their hands go. So we're trying to shorten that up. Now watch this swing. This will be a pretty normal swing. I'm going to take it back, and I just got to make sure that the body, our body gets opened up and the hands will lead nicely into impact. And so what happens is, when you're coming down, if the torso, upper body, gets in the right spot, the hands naturally go in front. So this is more of a 
rotational body, upper body issue and not a hand problem. Now, one other thing I want you to, to make sure you're doing here. I want you to, and this is what we teach in the single plane swing, I want to make sure that your lower body is getting in what I call in its stuck position, which means your knee is staying flexed and your foot is staying down. Why do I want that? Because that's going to promote upper body rotation. If you do this, if you slide, see if the, if the lower body slides laterally, it's inhibiting upper body rotation. I want to promote upper body rotation. So once again, watch my lower body. I'm going to basically keep that foot down and that foot, you'll see me flex my knee and watch the swing again. Here it goes. And because of the position of my lower body and the rotation of my upper body, it allows my hands to lead right into impact. That's your lesson for today. It's a little quick lesson for you. If you enjoyed these lessons, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you click that bell icon and get notified anytime I produce a new instructional video and make sure you give me a thumbs up.